now 2.37, we've been going about five hours. We're about to start drilling. And uh, I think I've run into a problem already because he hasn't done anything yet. Oh, hose. All right, last tank, we almost ruined it. All right, guys, so it's the next morning. I've had a lot to think about overnight and how I'm going to approach this day. Uh, the fish are doing fine. The cichlids in the sump system are all okay, obviously. Uh, the only fish I have uh, on the fish room floor at the moment in these tubs are bristlenose catfish, various types of bristlenose catfish. They're running on this very old air pump, and if you can see on camera, it's got a clamp attached to it to squeeze it. Basically, it's very loud, and having that clamp on there uh, silences that air pump. So all the bristlenose catfish are fine, all the fish are fine, but they're doing really well. Adam's taken all the guppies home and the java moss. They're all his. That was my thank you for him uh, helping me out yesterday with all the work that we had to do. Now, yesterday took a lot longer than we anticipated. Uh, basically, we had to, you know, label all the air line hoses. Uh, so we knew which, what airlines went to which tank. Uh, we had to dismantle all the power boards, all the power to each uh, stand because they're actually attached to the stands. Uh, so uh, we had to do all that. Then we actually had to drill out one of the shelves on this stand because that's where the sump's gonna go. I want the sump to be as low as possible on this rack. So gravity feeds that sump uh, from all the tanks. And then we actually also moved the stands out from the wall. And that was one thing I really didn't wanna to have to do because I don't have enough space in this room. It's a narrow room as it is. And uh, narrowing it up even more restricts what I can do in here. So the reason for that, why we had to move the stands off the wall was because there's a plug down the bottom over here that was sticking out of the wall and uh, the plugs I had plugged into it stuck out quite a bit. So I've managed to find two adapter boards that have plugs that are flush to the wall and then because of that, I've now been able to move the stands back against the wall and I've got the room that I originally had in this fish room. Now, unfortunately, because this side of the fish room is going to be on a sump system, I'm going to lose two tanks because of that, because a four foot tank has to go in their place. And I can't uh, position these, these two tanks anywhere else in the fish room. That is just how I'm going to have to live with it. So I'm going to have less tanks on this wall because of the sump system. But overall, it's going to be a much more stable system for my fish. And it's going to be much more easier for me to maintain the fish room because I don't have to do water changes out of every single individual tank. So I'm really glad that I've been able to push the tanks back to their original position right up against the wall. Now I just wanted to show you what we did with the lower tanks on this stand. So we removed a shelf off this rack, off this stand here, because we needed to lower the height of the sump so we could get a lot of water volume in the sump as much as possible. So water can easily feed via gravity, obviously, to the sump. So uh, the shelf of this stand had to be removed. Now that shelf didn't go to waste because I wanted to increase the height of these tanks. So I've inserted the shelf that was on this stand into here and then I've sat the tanks on that shelf. So I've raised these tanks up by about 10 centimeters, which will make it a lot easier to plumb to the sump because gravity will obviously feed the water quicker to the sump from these tanks because they're a lot higher than the sump will be. Now. Originally yesterday afternoon, we didn't drill the tank that was in this position. We decided to forego that because we figured it would be very difficult to get water from this tank to the sump without having some sort of plumbing at the front of the tank. Uh, I've given that a second thought and come up with a way to plumb this tank to the sump via the back of the rack. So what I'm going to have through the bulkhead here, there'll be a 90 degree elbow pointing to the back of the stand another 90 degree elbow pointing towards the back of the rack towards the sump, and then one length of PVC pipe that will feed water into the sump. There'll be absolutely no chance of leaks with that happening with that system. And then that way I can have all 10 tanks that we drilled yesterday hooked up to the sump system, which I'm really pleased about. If we didn't drill this tank, if I didn't hook it up to the sump, I would only have nine out of the 10 tanks hooked up to the sump system. And I'm already losing two tanks from the whole fishery to make way for the actual sump to filter the whole system. So I didn't want to actually lose three tanks. Uh, I wanted to be able to really hook this up to the sump system. Otherwise, it's starting to become a bit of a pointless exercise. So uh, I really want to maximize the amount of tanks I can put on this system. So I'm really happy that I've decided to swap the tank out that we didn't drill with a tank that we did drill and plopped it in this position. So now I'll be able to have all these 10 tanks hooked up to the sump. So you guys see, I'm having a coffee, morning coffee. 
working out what my next step is going to be. I've put all the lids on the tanks this morning. As I said, I swapped out a few tanks uh, to make way for one that was drilled on this side of the stand. I've inserted the recycled shelf onto this stand as well. So I've done quite a bit of uh, work in the fish room before I actually started filming this video. I've actually put all the lids back on. I've untangled all the airline hoses and put them back into their specific positions that they were in before we dismantled the whole system. But now my next step is to put all the LED units, all the lights, all the aquarium lights back onto these aquariums. Then I'm gonna be plugging them up to the power boards that are hidden underneath these stands. And then I'm gonna hook up the power cords to the power boards that are underneath these stands. And that is gonna be a lot of work because I had a lot of power coming from all different outlets in the fish room that I had the electricians set up before I built the fish room. So they were all on their own circuit so I don't trip the house power. And uh, obviously that's a good thing, but I'm gonna to have to work out how I had it all done because I've had to dismantle it all so I could take all the tanks out and move the stands around. So uh, a lot of stuff was on timers, lights were on timers, so I'm gonna to have to reset all that now. So a um, little bit of a painstaking thing, but I wanna get that done. And then once that's done, I can put the bristlenose catfish back in these tanks. All their specific sponge filters are in the water with them, so they are seated still. And that way I don't have to wait for a cycle to commence back on these tanks. And then after that, I'll fill up all the tanks once again with water, treat them and move the cichlids over into this rack again with their specific sponge filters. And again, they're all seeded, so I won't have to do a cycle on those sponge filters either. And then this system is ready to be plumbed together. I still, however, have to order the sump for this system. I need to still work out the dimensions that I want, how many parts of the sump I want drilled. Am I gonna have these two guys feeding into the sump from the side? or am I gonna have the PVC pipes fitting in over the lip of the sump? Obviously feeding in over the lip of the sump into the filter compartments is gonna be a lot easier to plumb and a lot easier to plan. However, if I do that, I'm gonna have less water volume available in the sump in case of, say, a power outage and water flowing back to the sump. So uh, I'm very mindful of that. Uh, so I might have to get the, the sump drilled in three positions uh, one being over this side for the five foot aquarium and then two holes for the, both these two tanks. Or I just forgo that and make the sump a little lower, a little shallower, not a deep sump. Uh, but then I run the risk of potentially overflowing the fish room if power was to cut out. So it's a very fine line and I still have to work out the dimensions of the sump that I want. Obviously I can't go more than 45 centimeters wide uh, or, or, and four foot long, but I can go very high. So I can go up to here if I wanted to, but if I went up to this height, then these tanks have to go in via bulkheads into the sump, and that's a lot more complicated. But at the end of the day, it's a lot more safer if I have much more uh, tank space in the sump for water to flow back into in the case of a blackout. Anyway, guys, that's for the future. That was still a few weeks away. Uh, the tanks are all drilled though, so I'm ready to start plumbing them up, uh, but I still need to order that sump. Okay, guys, all the tanks have power now. So you can see all the LED units are connected up. I've got some internal power filters in here ready to be turned on there for the bristlenose catfish tanks. This is where the cichlids are gonna be going again. And actually these three tanks, uh, these three lights, so these two tanks, these two tanks, and this five footer down here where the Leilupis are, are connected to a timer that turns on and off. And that lights the entire fish room actually, along with the uh, light that is on the pothos plant on my sump. So those tanks give the fish room a day night cycle every day. I don't obviously turn on every single light because not all the cichlids need very bright light all day long. Now, uh, so I've connected everything back up from behind the stands. It took quite a while to do, get it as neat as possible, and actually save myself two extension cords by doing this. So now the next thing to do is put water in the bottom row of tanks because that's where the bristlenose catfish are gonna go. Catch them out of here, pop them in the aquariums, and then obviously I need to fill these tanks back up with water. These will hold water change water. They'll use them as my water uh, reservoirs for the time being until they're plumbed up to the system. And this is where all the cichlids would go. Uh, so I'll end up having some Neal Ampralogus brevis sunspot in here, maybe a grow out tank in here, or Neal Ampralogus similis, and uh, two breeding pairs of Regani will go in here. 
And on the floor, you can see the tubs containing the bristlenose catfish that are gonna go into that bottom row, as well as all the mess that I made yesterday when me and Adam were trying to do everything as quickly as possible to get these tanks drilled. So I really can't wait to tidy up the fish room so it looks nice and neat and everything's put away and everything's done for today. Okay guys, the bottom row of tanks are full of water. All the internal power filters are on and the double headed sponge filters, two per tank are in. Everything's working, so now it's time to fill them up with the bristlenose catfish. Getting there. All the bristlenose catfish are in their specific tanks. We've got my four peppermint bristlenose in here, longfin uh, bristlenose, both the common color and albino longfin. We've got the short fin variety of bristlenose in here, and finally my albino bristlenose catfish short fin variety as well. So they're all in their tanks. Now what am I doing? filling up the rest of the tanks on this rack with fresh tap water. I'm going to treat it once all the water is in the tanks and turn on the sponge filters. So I've still got some sponge filters to put in some of these tanks, but I'm gonna do that as I'm filling the tank, as I'm filling all the tanks up. So it's almost there, almost there. Taken uh, again, pretty much all day. I've been in here since about 9 a.m and it's now 20 past two. And all I've had is two coffees today. So no food yet, pretty hungry, but I just wanna get this done. And then I can relax and enjoy the rest of my day. Uh, pretty much once I finish this, I'm gonna have to feed the fish as well. So uh, the end isn't really in sight yet, but we're almost there. So I can't fill these tanks up as much as I used to because obviously they're plumbed, um, or they're not plumbed yet, sorry. They've got a, uh, they're drilled, so we can't fill them up all the way, but that's all right. So on to the next tank now. Now obviously all the tanks have holes in them now, which the fish potentially could jump out of. So what I'm doing is double-sided duct tape, just sticking that to the hole, so the fish, if they were to jump and hit that duct tape, firstly, they're not gonna stick to it. Secondly, they can't jump out of the tank. Finally guys, all the tanks are full of water, fresh water. The bristlenose catfish are in their specific tanks. My water change reservoirs are full and I've tidied up the fish room as much as I can. I am spent today. I have been in here from about 9 a.m. It's now 4.30 in the afternoon. My back is killing me from bending over and catching all those fish. And I'm happy to say it's all ready to be plumbed up to a sump. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.